Hello everybody and welcome to game two of our first round in the qualification series, Citadel, currently south side of Crossroads and uh, he's lost his first game. It is going to be Ciez playing as UKF. And Ciez is currently 0-1 down to the player in the north. We have Jezulin playing as the Wehrmacht. The Spanish destroyer is looking in fine form today. Is he going to be on the warpath to victory, or will Ciez put a spanner in his works? I do have some confidence in Ciez, actually, after his first game. I think he played well. Um, I, do you know, I just think he's struggling picking moments to push. He was very good in the early game, but in the late game, I saw him kind of pull back off of some moments, or instant retreat, you know, when the, uh, when the IL-2s came in. I think moments like that, sometimes, you know, just like you see top players like Von Ivan or... Or DevM, they hold their ground in some of these situations. Uh, but Agreed. We don't see that from Ciers. And also, what we don't see is top level preservation. He's a, he played an amazingly good game for the first 20 minutes. But then after that, his preservation started to falter slightly. And Jeselin was able to catch him out with a few nice, cheeky squad wipes. And that put him on the back foot. But here we go, we've got the Universal Carrier coming out. <laughs> like, I want to be hyped about that as well, but I'm struggling. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the Universal Carrier is an excellent tool for the Brits. I it's, do uh, think it's the... great when it's upgraded. I don't know how good it's going to be at the start, no, the, especially as there's... The whole like point in getting it so early is it's a reconnaissance vehicle. It allows you to find out where the MG is and evade it. It also allows you to keep the Grenadiers from capping. And it's a great tool just to keep your opponent off kilter. And um, I think the difference in us, Dan, here is I... As a Co-1 orientated guy, I used to love light vehicles. They were like the reconnaissance scouting units. But in Co-2, we have not seen enough of that, in my opinion. I will agree on that, actually. I think that light vehicles and um, it, it, even, even some of the medium vehicles just don't get used properly. What I really think that, uh, as you say, with the light vehicles in terms of recon and capping, I think there's loads of units that don't... Uh, don't see their benefit, with it, which could be hugely beneficial. We see like infrared half track. We've got a unit that can basically see everything like the Eye of Sauron uh, for OKW, which is wildly underused as well. So I think those units do exist in Company of Heroes too. They do indeed. And uh, Universal Carrier, of course, is much better when it gets his upgrade. It's one of the few things keeping the Brits in the game, quite frankly, at the moment. Uh, you've got commandos, you've got the UC, you've got a few things that just give Brits a slight, tiny crutch, even though they've had so many other crutches nerfed, and they can barely eke out some level of competitiveness. Here we go, we've got the Brent upgrade. Vickers roll. I think one of the really nice things about Brits, uh, it's definitely that staying power, and oh, we've already got a Faust on that universal carrier. Oh. Nothing there to push it at the moment. It's a good time of the game to get Fausted because you can pretty much still reverse away without without much of a threat, although the Grenadiers look like they may push that direction to try and get that final uh, Faust. And is They've on got the left four hand seconds side of the left. Map. Two Ciez seconds left on the recharge. They need to get with an effective range. They've got the munitions. This could be one dead universal carrier. Uh, I don't think Ciez is going to get away from this. It's uh, just a matter of time. There goes the Faust. It will connect. And that investment is already down. That's a bit of a loss for Ciers, I think, especially after he just upgraded it. He's now uh, down in manpower. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game from here on. So the Universal Carrier is a 260 manpower investment, and of course he spent the 60 um, munitions on getting that. Uh, Vickers mounted. So he's a little bit behind now. We've got four Tommies that are very arduously capping up the map. And uh, Jezulin is going to be thinking to himself, this is going to be... Pretty standard, and uh, back to business as usual. I think Ciers has still got a relatively okay position, because we don't normally see this, but I mean, Brits are going to be going up the left-hand side of the map. They're still going to have a VP. They're still going to have territory points, but they are like they do have a, a hard cutoff uh, on the left-hand side, which uh, Jezlin, I'm sure, will go for shortly. But one of the great things about the Brits is that they're staying power. I mean, they can draw our engagements for minutes, uh, as long as they're in green cover. So... Uh, you know, Ciaz, maybe it will have some time to build back up. Uh, it's just that he's playing from the back foot, but all things permitted, you know, 487 VPs, still got resources coming in. I wouldn't count the him Brits. out just for one unit. Mm, yeah, but the Brits this, themselves as a faction have the lowest win rate in both auto match and uh, GCS uh, 2, his first qualifying tournament two weeks ago in Barbarossa. Uh, they barely won a single game. In fact, they lost 80% of their games, uh, which was a pretty horrific 
uh, win rate <laughs> for a faction in a tournament. Um, so one might think that this game is over, but I, I don't want to count CS out yet because we've seen miraculous things happen in Company Heroes past. Um, saying that though, Dan, we now have the Spy Hundreds Spy Fancy Scout Car on the battlefield, and that's certainly not going to make things easy for him. No, it's not. It's going to be a long retreat here for Ciez. It's got to go through a lot of units as well, including a setup MG42 that's along the retreat path. And Ciez was building a sniper. I see that's been cancelled upon sight of the scout car. It's kind of uh, unfortunate timing, really, because if that scout car hadn't come out when it had, maybe uh, Ciez would have made a bit of a mistake having that sniper out on the field. Instead, he's requisitioning the AEC. He'll soon be building it. And Jezulin, in typical build order, um, Razor Edge fashion, is straight away getting a pack 40. So he gets the 222, forces his opponent to go to AEC, then counters the AEC before it's even on the battlefield. So there's the AEC's counter, about to roll on the field now, and the AEC is only 40% through building. This is strategic dominance. It's a really nice thing to point out when. You know, Jezlin is actually knowing the counter that he's created and is countering that early on. And you don't get much much better than that in RTS. That's kind of what you want to see across the flow of a game. Um, so yes, yeah, then, oh gosh, well, is he making a mistake here by going for this AEC? He could have brought out an AT gun. No, it's the only thing he can do, really. The AEC is a damn good unit, and it can be extremely powerful. As I say, I think that the Brits are a faction of crutches. It's just that they've had one, their best crutches snapped, and they're now on their old crutches. Do you know those amazing aluminium NHS crutches you can get down? Oh, 2 2 two's being attacked by the AC. He needs to get out of there. Where's the Pack 40 in all this? The Pack 40's actually set up, but the line isn't good. A good ground attack here would suffice, but it does miss. Good play from uh, Ciez, but uh, didn't quite get the finishing blow that he needed. Still on the back foot, but... but Good play, good timing. Indeed, so the, the analogy I was using is, you know those lovely aluminium NHS crutches that are lightweight and uh, strong and durable, Dan? I do, I've collected many pairs, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I, I feel in the balance that the, the Brits had them taken away from them and snapped, and they've been given those rickety wooden crutches that have splinters in the side, and they're not as good and the AEC is one of those last few remaining good things for the Brits, and it really needs to be the workhorse of Ciez's army as a result. It will be very good as well if he can get this unit, um, if he can keep this unit late into the game, because um, one of the great things about the AEC is that it has a stun ability which turret locks. It's it's 16 to 20 seconds, if you know that. Um, wow. So when you go like later into the game, the AEC, is, as you say, is, is very very potent. It's, it's a good, um, it's a great thing that we saw. You know, Relic and the community work together to get those kind of units working well late into the game. But uh, sort of like scout car here, chasing down more Tommy squads. They've got long retreats. CS is trying to deep cap and decap fuel and. VP on the left hand side and it's one of the things you really need to keep doing to just keep Jezlin from pinning him down in the base. It's a tough game for Ciaz. It is a tough game. He's been able to, uh, as you say, push up into that south, that northwest pitch of engagement. Look at the Grenadiers already neutralizing the cutoff. All the fuel's even been capped. He's all, like a great chess player. He is already always three moves ahead. Well, a great chess player is probably about 18 moves ahead, but the analogy stands and in this case, uh, Jesslyn's thinking ahead and just punishing Ciaz at every step and every turn. So we're going to see a sniper battle. I wasn't expecting this to be in the build for both players. And again, like, Jesslyn here, is, is Jesslyn seeing something I'm not? Because he seems to maybe know that Ciaz is going to bring something like this out. He's actually there first again. And uh, be interested to see if he keeps that sniper cloaked or whether he just uh, decides to yeah. go straight in with it. That was going to be my point. I was going to say that uh, if he puts it on hold fire, he's clearly a genius. But yeah. I think he just it just is the best thing for him right now is to bleed the Brits and to make them suffer because they're already suffering, so why not induce more suffering? So actually, uh, you could probably credit CS with... No, they're both just lucky to have brought on the sniper at the same time. But that said, CS has had the advantage done because he saw the Wehrmacht sniper open up which means he has the advantage of trying to get the counter snipe now. And uh, let's see if he's able to do that. That could get him back in the game. It would, yeah. I mean, uh, Je I think Jezelin's waiting to see maybe maybe teching or, or something from Ciez because he hasn't 
decided to go battle phase two. He hasn't decided like any further tech than what he's on. And when you're investing in the sniper like that, with the amount of fuel he's got, I guess that means he hasn't quite decided where he's going and he's just trying to make use of the manpower. But he's invested mm. a lot into tier one and tier two, so... If Sienz gets the counter snipe, I think that's a great move, and he's in a great position for it. Look at, look at that. Oh, he is. Look at the Wehrmacht sniper. He's getting ever closer. He's going to sneak up along these bushes. He just needs to offer it some bait, and that's what he the uh, two Tommies in the building are. Oh, there you go. This could be his moment. He's going to take the shot, surely. He's only got to open up once. And there he goes with the counter snipe. It's going to be a counter snipe. Sure of it. Oh. Sienz getting the comeback he needed there. Enemy at great. the gates, and that enemy at the gates was... Pulverized by that heavy 55 cal round of the British, well, the Scottish sniper, the British, Scottish, same thing, I guess. Um, great work by CS Dan. Is he back in the game? I, I think so, because Jeslin, I don't think, has made use of his resource advantage. So it's not exactly like he's utilizing a window for his medium vehicles or whatever he wants to tech to. Uh, I'm thinking, does this mean he wants to maybe bank up and, and get tier 4 out and maybe use mobile defense if there's a risk situation? That's a great rifle grenade there from the Grenadiers! Great dodge, though. I mean, he mm. dodged well there, Sias. I mean, I know it's a hard retreat dodge, but he still got out of there. Um, Jesse Lynn has been known to use tier 4. That said, he's just built on the port port on the Puma. But he has been known to use tier 4, so that is something we could watch out for if Sias extends the game even further. I still think it's a good choice, actually. It's, uh, I was hoping he'd go for tier 4. Nothing stops so, it. There isn't anything right now, other than CS, who's going to ba try and battle back into this game with courage, fortitude, and determination. Puma is slinking around. <gasps> Sniper was just found out. Hulk, the uh, turret gunner nearly got him. Look at that. The scout card dives deep. Jeslin. Looking to make some kind of impact on that strategic decap outside of Sears' base. Puma still pushing hard. AC's got to retreat. And I think Jeslin's going to go in again. Making he good is. use of the fact that Brits just don't have that snaring capability they need. They don't have that snaring capability. And that's why they're all so limited as a faction. And the uh, Puma was a little bit unlucky not to get that miraculous uh, attack round at the base entrance there. And take out the AC once and for all. Uh, but he is starting to tighten the noose. Despite losing the sniper, he's actually gathering around CS right now like buzzards that smell blood. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in CS's shoes right now. I mean, he does have a commander pick at least. I'm just thinking, where would he use this? Uh, what what are the options for him right now? And I don't know, maybe would it an AVRE? Be something uh, I've seen these used horrifically in the past, and especially when you've got support yeah. weapons on the field. It's a big unit, probably wouldn't be it's too... 12 CPs though, he's never going to have time to get it for it to make an indent right now, and Jeslin certainly is uh, hanging a noose around Siez's neck, and it's going to be execution time in the imminent future, so uh, Siez needs something a little bit more imminent, I would guess. Right now it's going to be the six pounder, not a bad option to try and uh, push away these light vehicles. I th if he gets the right timing on this, I mean, bear in mind, AC's got stun ability. He's got the Sniper Vet 1, so he's got a stun ability there as well. And with the good positioning from the 6-pounder, I think he could deal with the light vehicles, even the medium vehicles, if they do come on. So I think as, as long as he's prepared to utilize abilities, which I think is what the Brits are about. Well, of course they're about abilities, but... Um, the abilities are ready now. The ability they're, they're, is ready now. They no, give you those audio The ability sheets. is ready now. Dad, I still haven't finished. There's two more abilities to go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just reading the, uh, the scripts for the British Commander Announcer. Oh, are you finished now? The ability is ready now. <laughs> there you go. I'm finished. It's just a delay. Because We're you just getting another, another communication in from head com <laughs> headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> this one's slightly muffled. The bit it ready. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to kill a cow. I can't believe it! It's ridiculous. Pioneers uh, scouting. Of course, there is much better scouting lines for Jesselin now. He now has veterancy 2 for the 222, giving 30% increased sight range. Well, there's so much going on. Sears is really giving it some. Grenadiers have come around for a flank. The AC is going to retreat around there. That's a bad move because Jesselin does have the ability to Faust. Got the resources ready, and there it goes. Pocket rocket. It misses! <laughs> Missed! The pocket rocket missed! <laughs> we'll ignore that, we'll ignore that, move on! <laughs> Car okay. 
Camera was off the false mist. Totally legit. And uh, fortunately, no damage caused. And uh, scout car. I thought I knew what caused those misses. I thought it was something like the model hitting the ground because you drive too close to him. But in this case, he just missed. And that's not meant to be in the game files as far as I knew. Unless it's been ninja patched. Faust has now has a, a 1 in 10,000 miss opportunity. I mean, was that was the Faust going to cause enough health damage to kill the AEC? I think that's an interesting point there. So it would, it would, was that a miraculous save? Uh, or, or... Well, I think you need to ask yourself, what if it was the seventh game of the best of seven in GCS2's final in 16th of September? And that was the Faust that was going to kill the Tiger race that was in Von Ivan's base. I think it would be very significant then. Yeah, it's uh, hard to call right now. Uh, Ciaz will be uh, kind of thanking his lucky stars that he didn't potentially lose that unit. Um, Ciaz, I don't think, is looking too bad. He's dropped to 300 VPs. That's not the end of the world. Jezelin has teched up Battle Phase 2. Tier 3 is now on the field. Ooh, really interesting to see. Sniper's in a difficult difference. position. LMG's firing. I'll tell you what, though, Dan. There was nearly a counter attack then. The uh, 2 2 2 went in for the sniper with the LMG. But the AC and the six pounder are all rating for them, and they could have gotten the kill. There's, uh, there was good positioning there. I mean, Jeslin has to be aggressive. And, uh, I think CS is handling it well. I think you point out it was a good, it was a good opportunity there, and it's all about creating those opportunities. CS certainly is. Uh, sniper though is uh, seven kills at the moment. It's not doing badly for the time it has out. I'm a little bit worried about it though because Jesselin keeps catching it off guard. He does, and uh, it's had such low health for such a long time. I mean, it has been healed once, it's now being healing again, but uh, it's limited its battlefield capabilities to the point where it's only got those seven kills. Panzer Mark IV about to hit. This is going to really add some meat to Jesselin, Jesselin's bones. Um, if anybody's wondering why I pronounce Jesulin as Jesulin, it is a long-standing speech impediment, and I would prefer you didn't draw attention to it. Pack 40, great shot. Smoke popped by the AEC. It's been a good response from the AEC every time it has come under pressure. Uh, good smoke pops all around. Now the AT gun's in a pretty bad position, and uh, is facing the wrong way. Isn't going to reverse that out of there. The squad is oh. not going to benefit from any cover. It may even go down. That would be great if CS can pick that up. But Jeselin is going to capitalize on this, and he's going to go in with Panzerfall and the scout car, knowing that AEC is damaged. It's a tense moment for CS. He could have got um, the Tommy squad as well. It was a nice rifle, and they killed four men, nearly, nearly went for this kill. But the Panzer IV is going ham. He feels uncountered. Well, there they go. The six pounder was waiting for him, so it wasn't so. It's a nice rifle grenade. They're going to push the Tommy squad off. I actually really it's like the, the pressure. Yeah, it's good. You've seen that MG's just waiting for him to even have the temerity to try and cap around the map. That's how brutal Jesulin's getting right now. Mm. I wonder if the Cromwell is going to make that much of a difference here. For Ciaz. I mean, I guess one thing that he does need to do is infantry is actually performing well now against the Grenadiers. I think that's an important thing. And... It, if those infantry squads can stick together, because I think CS has maybe been spreading out a little bit too far. Uh, if they can stick together, put up a front line, and then let the AT gun push away the light vehicles, let the Cromwell kind of uh, add to any manpower damage against Grenadiers. And then I think actually he could make himself a good fortified position and then work out from there. We still have a commander selection that could go on, so maybe like land mattress or something just to push an area before he attacks. I think there's still yeah. options here. There is, but uh, not there won't be options for much longer as this victory point counts is dropping. There is one victory point capped at the moment. He's doing a good job of defending it with those Vets 2 Tommies with their um, the better received accuracy bonus. 22% debuff there. But this Panzer IV is coming to try and rectify that situation. And as soon as Jezulin would be able to lock in that triple cap on the VPs, we would see this game ebb away from Ciaz's hands. There we go. Wow, Jezulin is uh, straight away Reacting to the sight of the Cromwell, AT guns trying to take ground attack through the hedgerow, and Jeslin, uh, Jeslin had the engineers just where that Cromwell was. 
And I think that, that means that uh, Siaz wasn't confident to make any pushes. Wasn't. Another thing trouble. we just saw was the uh, sniper was able to decrew the Pat 40, but the Ostrup and recruit it immediately. Oh, nice shot by the AEC. That 2 2 2 is somehow surviving. Yeah, Jesen and. Uh, I really like the Ostrup and call in. Really, really like that. Um, because I think if we know there's one thing that really counter stalls out the Brits, it's Ostrupen. Um, because they're so quick to reinforce, so quick to get anywhere, and they just they just kind of waste time. And if you've got two VPs and you're getting loads of resources in, why not waste the Brits' time? Stop them from getting any decent pushes in. See exactly what Jeslin is, is doing here. It really it really nerfs the sniper as well. Ostrupen are pretty worthless. And the, your support weapons can be recruited immediately, um, which is not often the case as Vermats. It's such a powerful utility to have on the battlefield. In the west there, uh, Panzer Fours mitigating those Tommies. I do like that Siez is always paying attention to the map. It's not like he's ever staying still, you know, he, he's at least always attempting the left. He's seeing where Jezelin has moved, he's seeing the new positions of units. It's, he's playing tactically and he's, he's playing very well. And he's got a lot to deal with. But then again, look, he's taking his second VP. Once he's in this position, you've only really got to defend. He's got a second AT gun out. I think he's actually gone for commandos. This is interesting. Yeah, commandos. I believe that uh, CS has been studying Aimstrong's build, uh, number one Brit player in the world, which is, of course, the UC in the early game, which didn't work, but the commandos in the mid game, which do become your scalpel tool. There's light gammon bombs on retreat paths, etc. <clears throat> oh, no. It looks like the Cromwell's going to take a Faust. He has slightly overextended. There is an AT gun hanging around. Uh, Jeselin just lost something there. I think that was the Ostrupen went down. Yes, one of the Ostrupens has died to the uh, Brend up infantry section. Those double Brends, but them themselves are now in difficult waters. They were trying to stall for the double six pounder combo. That 12 pounder or 10 pounds and two pound coins is in the center and waiting for one of these vehicles. Oh, couldn't get the kill. <laughs> two, two, two's had such a good time of it, Danny. It's now got Veteracy 3, which is um, it gives so many bonuses. 20% rotation speed, 20% maximum speed increase, 20% accuracy increase, 20% acceleration increase, 20% health increase, and 15% MG accuracy. It gives five separate statistical increases. Veteracy 3 for the 222. Two, two. That actually becomes a pretty good unit in the late game. Pack 40 max range. Thing. Very good. Yeah, I did just bring up the, the sight range um, that it got from previous vet as well. It's such a good spotting unit, but I mean, it's going to give some intel, but I don't really know what it's going to spot in this game right now. Um, you know, it's not like there's indirect fire for, for Jeslin to make use of. Like, no. Scout cars had its, had its window. It's, it's, it's good though, I suppose, because you know you can keep it in the center of the battlefield. You can try and work out where CS is going to push next, because it's, it's the emphasis now, although he does currently have two victory points, the emphasis has largely been on CS, and he has got to push out of this situation and make a game of it, because, oh god, both Panzers coming in, the Command Panzer and the Panzer Mark IV. Ooh, this is a, this could be a good moment for CS. Two AT guns lined up. What's the Cromwell doing? Cromwell needs to get a little closer. We do have a stun. On that Panzer IV, no smoke is popped, and one Panzer IV goes down with a great push by Siez. Nice work. Both six pounders working in unison with the incredible um, ability from the AEC from max range there. The um, great shot off. Just hear the uh, RAF flying over there, giving a little bit of recon. The AT gun has been taken down by Siez. I think, I think Siez is, is making this work right now. The AT gun gone down. I'm wondering if he can actually destroy it and give himself that extra advantage he needs. Has he noticed? Now, I don't think he will have seen that quite yet. This, this is his first sign of it now. With the assault operation, he's been very aggressive with the uh, Tommies who get the, the better at accuracy on the attack there. They will have seen the Pat 40, and he is now going to whir into action, try and take it out with the Cromwell. Yeah, I think with that's an what incredible we... first shot. <laughs> I think that's what we want to see. We want to see that that go down. He's got one more chance to make this work before it's capped. There it goes. Ooh, yes, he will. The six pounder from max range. Now the Puma's in a difficult situation. You need to be very careful about 
how he defends, and this double AT gun actually makes a huge difference. Once you've got those Vet 3 Tommies with the Bren guns, and you know, with that kind of staying power, he no longer has to worry about being pushed away so hard. He can actually stand his ground, even through rifle grenades, even through the Puma, and uh, just position those AT guns to do huge amount of work for him. He can. He's also getting um, a Royal Engineer tap to help keep these tanks on the battlefield, or this tank on the battlefield, because it's being a superstar right now, quite frankly. And down on the graphs, by the way, on the overview, on army value, it shows that CS has taken the, a distinctive lead for the first time. We've had Jezulin beat in front twice distinctively, but now CS, for the first time in this game, in terms of army value, is in the lead. That's true, but Jeslin does have resources to make uh, a unit choice here, and depending on what it goes for, I think that actually his value will come out higher again. So Possibly. It's, yeah, it's, I'm kind of looking at Jeslin thinking, what are, what are you going to do right now? Um, there's a little bit of a lull in gameplay, which maybe suggests what's happening. Battle Phase 3, Jeslin's moving his engineers over there, it's going to be Tier 4. I can tell and you think... exactly what he's going to do, Danny's going to get the Panzerwerfer out. The Panzerwerfer is the perfect accompaniment to his army right now, if he gets another pack 40, that is. Um, because he can then decrew the six-pounders and push in and take out these Brit vehicles. Here comes the Cromwell, the AC is also rushing in, he knows the pack is down. He knows that Jezulin is currently weakened. It's a really good move there, he's trying to push, I think, for the scout car, which had engine damage. The AC is going to come up as well. Do we see any stun shots? Yes, we do. The Puma is stunned. Cromwell's going in again. Sia is on a warpath right now, inflicting huge damage. Has to pull out with the AC, but two AT guns come up for the defense. There is no way, no way that Jezelin can push this back. No way at all. Siez is playing a fantastic game as Brits, showing that if you play in a certain concerted and defensive way, you can slowly get into the game despite losses. And uh, it's a great example of that. And I think the superstars on the battlefield are clearly the two six-pounder AT guns. The AC did a good job. I mean, that's hit Veteran C3, for God's sake. But the uh, six-pounders have kept him in the game. They have been fantastic. And uh, just like you called it AE, Panzerwerfer is about to arrive on the field. And then it's going to be a situation of, do these AT guns have enough health to... Uh... Did you see that? Did you see that rifle grenade? Sorry, I was just having a look at the uh, the time. Jeslin actually planned the retreat path of that unit. Nice, New. yeah. Pretty standard though, I guess. I mean, Helping Hands has montage videos on those. Uh, from when Helping Hands used to play in tournaments and play Company Heroes competitively. Um, I mean, so, yeah, it's a good thing. I mean, Jeslin has the resources to do it. 320. Oh, yes, the first Panzerwerfer Barrage is incoming down. Sorry to draw your attention to it quite rudely, but uh, here we go. We're going to... Fire high into the sky and come plummeting down. Where are they headed at the moment? Having a look for it, he's actually targeting the infantry which had moved. 100% wow. sure that I like that to be honest. The AC needs to be careful. On the left hand side there just outside Jeslin's base. But it is now Siez who is pushing Jeslin back into the base. And we were not 10 minutes ago. Saw the exact opposite situation. So... Jezulin is going to live or die by how good his rocket artillery is. And he can't afford any more mishaps like that. I mean, he may have, uh, you know, attacked that shrubbery. But he really needs to save them for the six-pounders. And mm. um, in not doing so, I think that's a bit of a, a, a mistake. It was a wasted first shot. You always rely on the surprise factor of a Panzer for the first time. Um, you know, that, the infantry was moving. It took a gamble. You know, I thought, wow, the... Panzer IV just ate some huge shots from the six-pounder. Will the Cromwell finish him off? He's going around the corner. He's going to eat a Faust. Not able to do so. You know what I thought he was going to do, Dan? I thought you could uh, attack ground through the hedgerow, but you can't, of course. It is actually a shot-blocking hedgerow. So he can't take out the Panzer Werfer like that. I think some things can. You're right in saying that? I think like pack 43. Yes. Yeah. That might be right, maybe. Oh, well, I'm going to see that. You know, we'll... <laughs> Calling all cruises, all cruises. Can the Pack 43 shoot through these shot blocking hedgerows on crossroads? We need to know. Also, the Jagdpanzer. I would like to. Jag, uh, tiger, rather. Jag Tiger. Wow. Well, it's Jeslin now. Dropped down to 400 VPs. It's 30 minutes into the game. Sears has a long way to go. But he's definitely got the stronger army on the field right now. Jeslin still has a lot of resources, so we still get to see another tech choice out from him. 69 uh, pop cap. 
So he still has room to move. He's just got to figure out what's going to be that prevalent unit that's going to change the face of the game for him. You'd think it'd be a panther now, wouldn't you? I think he needs a panther to really punish that Cromwell and that AEC and stop them bullying him. Panther or Brumbear, I, I think, you know. Um, but then again, Jess, yes, going for the Comet. You see there. Panzerwerf is again trying to target the infantry. Just don't think that's good usage for him. And do you know what? I'm suddenly reminded of uh, ESL when oh, we just saw. What a shot! Double six pounders, max range, taking out the Puma. That's a beautiful, beautiful play there. I'm currently reminded a of. Uh, Good old ESL, remember we saw Jeslin consistently make mistakes with the Calliope. In fact, it's just reminded me, I don't think Jeslin's any good with indirect fire. <laughs> he, he did dev him on an auto match cast I watched uh, the other... I've got, you know, it's a very good win, he got two pounds of a fist, but I'd say it's a very RNG dependent... Well, not RNG dependent, it's very luck dependent, because if you're firing blindly, of course you're leaving it up to luck. And he is doing a bit of that nice work by the Cromwell to nearly take out the... Um, MG there also took a nice shot at the 2-2-2 and uh, Cheshire is pegged back. Oh, well, with the Comet on the field, I mean, it's going to be against the Panther. Jeslin has a lot of work to do when this unit comes on. But you know, the, the infantry, I just think the infantry are relatively useless now. That's the, the key thing, I, I think, is that the Grenadiers just cannot stand up to five-man squads with the Brens. And uh, Jeslin may lose a Vet 3 Grenadier here if he's not careful. Here's the first sight of the Panther. Here it is. 55 tons of uh, very futuristic looking main battle tank, but it's been butchered by the AEC and its ability. The Comet is manhandling it right now. <laughs> Panther, what Panther? Take your Panther back to the Krupp factory because this one's done. Yeah, th that was the AEC ability we were talking about. The turret lock is so insane. That Panther had no effectiveness at all. Well played by Sears. Really well played. Great Amazing. demonstration of Brit capabilities. Great just demonstrations of...